Okay, the dog shelter. Okay, a shelter is unpredictable, right? It's unpredictable. Some of the staff treats the dogs nicely. Some of them not so much. Maybe they get walked three times in one day. Maybe they only get walked once the next. Then they have to watch other dogs getting adopted, and they wonder that. But they wonder to themselves, when is somebody going to adopt me? Why doesn't anybody pick me? Is there something wrong with me? What's wrong with me? Why aren't I adopted? Why am I not worthy to be to be with a family? Well, the single life is the same way. The single life is highly unpredictable for women. Some men treat her well. Some men treat her like dog shit. Some are married. Some are players. You know, some are around a lot. Others once a month. Then they watch their friends getting commitments and, and wedding rings from their boyfriends and getting married, and they think to themselves, well, when am I going to get married? Why can't I find a boyfriend? Is there something wrong with me? Do I see that similarity? The shelter life equals the single life. Let's go to the next one. They have both had plenty of chances. A shelter dog has had more than a few owners in the past, but those owners didn't know how to potty train them, didn't know how to keep them from tearing up the house. They didn't want to crate train them. They were afraid to raise their voice at the dog because it's inhumane, right? A shelter dog a lot of times has had multiple owners, but because those owners couldn't handle them, they ended up with another owner or back in the shelter. Sluts have had plenty of boyfriends in the past, but were afraid to check her in private and in public. Because they were afraid to check them in private and in public, they had no idea how to cultivate good behavior and eliminate bad behavior. They weren't aware of the fact that women are self-destructive by nature and need a firm hand to keep them away from things that could harm her both mentally and physically. They are clueless about the real mindset of a woman that she's not looking for Mr. Nice Guy who's going to let her do whatever the hell she wants, but that she's looking for a strong leader and that she wants and needs to be disciplined when she steps out of line. A woman has had plenty of boyfriends and husbands who could not handle them, but because they couldn't handle her, she's back in the shelter or with another boyfriend who is inept at handling her properly. Cage trying to eat them. Anyway, maybe they're not good with people. Maybe they're not good around with children. Maybe they only eat people food. Whatever the case may be, shelter dogs are in the shelter for a reason. A woman who is perpetually single is single for a reason. People around her will tell her she's a great catch or that Mr. Wright is out there somewhere or that her last boyfriend made a mistake when he dumped her. But they don't always know the whole story. She might be an insufferable bitch. She could have expensive habits. She could be a drug addict. She could be an alcoholic. Maybe she has daddy issues. I mean, the list is endless. And we all know this. But the point is that if a perpetually single woman was such a catch, she'd have been caught already, right? Oh, I'm such a catch. Well, why are you 39 and still haven't been caught? Okay, this is going to be a trigger alert. So we're on the Black Pill Gnostic site. So we're going to go in. So any... BWs, they got sensitive feelings. I suggest that you turn this off right now. You've been warned. Okay. Now you heard the clips from Donovan Sharp talking about the similarities between a rescue dog and perpetually single women. When I first saw the title, obviously, you know, I'm a black man. I immediately thought about black women. Who's the most perpetually single woman on the planet, except the black woman in America. So I investigated to see exactly what he was saying. And you know what? You know, I know he meant all women, all women in this category, but a lot of things he said <laughs> fit black women to a T. A lot of reasons why they're perpetually single is the things exactly that he said about especially about the point about the owners not being able to handle the dogs and so they would go to another owner or back to the shelter but this is like the last 20 minutes of his show last 30 minutes of his show i highly suggest that you go back and look at it hopefully donovan will hear this and he make a special clip of just that portion because these are great analogies now what got me to thinking about why this is so pertinent why the analogy is so apropos is that I was talking to Thanksgiving I was talking to my son and my sister 
And I was talking to my son because he dates a lot of Latinas. And I asked him why, and you know, he was being diplomatic, but he said that he doesn't want to date anybody that resembles his, his mother and his sisters. I'm sure there was more than that, <laughs> other than just the resemblance. But the second thing he said is that the Latinas were choosing. They were choosing black men very heavily. And the reason that the Latinas were choosing black men very heavily, and I'm sure that's probably the reason that most other women coming from other cultures choose black men heavily, is because, as he said, the women were telling him that black men are easier to deal with, they're uh, more chill, they have more fun with black men. I said, even though they said black men cheat, because black men have a reputation for cheating, they still preferred to deal with black men over and above their own. Now, I'm sure that's not all, but this is the reason that they were given, that, that was given. Now, when I was talking to my sister and we were talking about what my son said about dating Latinas, and she, we started mentioning all the black men in the family that were either dating Latinas or married to Latinas or having children by Latinas and living with them. And it's got to be the point, it was like 80% of the men, 80% of the young men were actually dating or in a relationship with Latinas rather than black men. I know uh, that Southern California is very heavily Latina, Latino, I should say. It's like maybe almost 40%. And I think as far as black people are concerned, it's only like maybe seven or eight percent. So the ratio is very, the ratio is very heavily tilted toward the Latino culture. So proximity has a lot to do with it. But the thing is, is that one thing my sister said, and this is something that used to bother me, it doesn't bother me anymore. It's like, what the sister's going to do? What are they going to do against this onslaught? What are they going to do if they're left in the lurch? And when I heard Donovan compare women to uh, single women to rescue dogs, they said basically the same thing. Are black women becoming rescue dogs? Is their attitudes, their unwillingness to change or adapt or be cordial or compete for their men, is that the reason that they're going to be going from owner to owner and shelter to shelter? Because as Donovan says, the shelter life and single life are the same. And eventually you're going to wonder why you're not being picked. So although black women that are shouting down pick me's, or as we call them pick me's, even though they said they're against being pick me's, they're actually pick me's themselves. They, they want to be pick me's. They want to be desired. They want to be picked by their own men or for any man. So you hear what they're saying. If they're barking like dogs in a shelter and if they can't get picked by black men, then they want to get picked by like Latino men or white men or whatever man will have them. And at the end of the day, they always get put back in the shelter or they're constantly roaming from man to man, racking up body notches and body counts so that some men will pick them and take them off the market. I was just wondering, do black women have rescue dog behavior? You know, go to his video and listen to the whole thing because a lot of stuff was pertinent. Now, a lot of sisters claim that they've been mistreated by former owners or former men or the system has screwed them up. And so that's just, this is why they're exhibiting behavior like they do. And these behaviors that they pick up are actually irritating to the men that they're dating, which is why they don't keep them for very long or get serious with them. And sometimes even if they're married, they break up. The marriage breaks up is because of their adopted behaviors that they can't get along with the man that they're with. And just like Donovan says, the husband, the boyfriend, and the side dude, they all couldn't handle this woman. Just like the owners couldn't handle the dog because they exhibit bad behaviors. And this is what black men have been complaining about. Their women exhibiting bad behavior or unwanted behavior, which is why a lot of guys sit on their hands or pick different women. 
why the marriage rate for, for women, black women is so low, 26%. And even though there's more black women than black men, their interracial marriage rate is extremely low. And it's not just because of culture or culture of black culture, because the black male a marriage rate out of interracial marriage rate is what? Four times higher. So I thought this was interesting. This was an interesting take. Uh, like I say, shout out to Donovan Sharp. I would have never thought of it. And I was really curious to see what his take on sheltered dog versus professionally single women. And a lot of what he says applies to the black community and black women, which is why even though they look good, even though they look healthy, the perpetual bad behavior of these women keeps them perpetually single that they can't find a man or can't find a good home, as Donovan Sharp says. They got daddy problems, like he said, daddy issues, been mistreated by other men, social, bad social behaviors. They have anxiety issues, all kinds of stuff that black women have that keep them perpetually single. And then when they get into their 30s, they're begging for a guy to, to come rescue them. They want the simps to be cleanup men. Simps that were never trained to handle a woman like that. Because most nice guys or classic men or educated lambs, as we call them, didn't date these kind of women in their 20s. So for them to own them or take ownership of them, it's very difficult because they weren't trained to handle them. They weren't trained to handle all the different psychological nuances and problems that these women have. Just like most untrained uh, dog owners that get a dog from the pound and the dog has bad behavioral problems, they're not trained to get rid of them or train that out of them. And so a lot of times either they'll end up sending the dog back to the pound or just letting the dog go out on the street and roam around as a stray. And unfortunately, uh, black men don't really send our women back to the pound to be picked up in one particular area, like say back to the family, we put them back out on the street. That's what black people do to their dogs that they don't want. They put them out on the street as a stray. A lot of black men, they can't handle the woman or gets tired of the woman. They don't send her back to the pound. He just puts her back out on the street and stray as a stray. And she wanders from yard to yard trying to find something to eat or trying to find a home. So she wanders from man to man trying to find a man that will take her. And that's what you're seeing nowadays. A lot of rescue dogs that have been put out on the street as strays. And as the economy gets worse, you can see more women being put out on the street as strays. Because the pound, which is the government, which is the welfare office, can only accept so many. And the money's drying up. So, that's my analogy. I thought it was interesting. From a red pill and even a black pill perspective. Our black women becoming the new rescue dogs. Are black men putting these women back out on the street astray so they can wander from man to man? Just curious. But that's all I got, brothers. Normally my rambles are a little longer, but uh, this is just a thought. It's just a short one. So I'll see you guys on the next one.